but I miss Africa so much, bro. Like, it feels good to be back home, but it's like, when I was in Nigeria, it was like an everlasting thrill of what's next. I miss Ghana too. Like, Ghana was such a nice, vibey place. Like, I'm taking somebody on vacation there. Water my mother, bro. It's like when you go see it with your own two eyes, you know this is a whole different vibe, bro. Really the motherland, bro. Like, no glaze. No glaze, bro. No glaze. That's crazy, bro. Shout out to all my Nigerians. Shout out to all my Ghanaians. I love y'all so much, bro. I bleed green and white, and I bleed red, yellow, and green. No cap. Yo, what's up, people? Into the future with everyone. People, this year we're launching a new project. And that is more or less a sample of our project called Back to Our Roots. Forget everything you've ever heard. Go to Africa because you got to see something. <laughs> got to touch base with me. Do that jump right there. <laughs> Once you see that, then you need to go to... And then you got to go to... You'll understand who we are. For anyone who has been to the motherland, anyone who has been to Africa, anyone who has been to the Caribbean, people, we want to hear your story, yeah? It's about time we need to let people, you know, get to know what exactly it feels like being in the motherland. And for that reason, if you have been, or you planning to, Get in touch with us, get in touch with us and we will definitely, you know, reach out to you to come and hear your story. Join us on this channel if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Guys, we hit 1 million views last year. Hi guys, I am in the studio with Nana from Black Next Gen and he's going to be interviewing me on my, about my trip to Gambia. I'm so excited to be out of the hot seat and in somebody else's hot chair. Alright. Boom people! So another blended opportunity. As I always, I kept, I told you guys, um, I was coming to meet somebody who has been to the motherland, yeah? And I always say to people, going to the motherland, it's not a privilege, but it's something that is essential in terms of somebody's identity. Lo and behold, I have silver in the hot seat, yeah? Mm -hmm. Silver, where exactly have you been? Well, hi everyone. My name is Silver T. Lining. You can just call me Silver, otherwise known as Free Flame Thoughts. Yeah. And I've just come back from, yes, it is a privilege. Okay. Um, Gambia. Boom! My, second, my second location of another destination to the motherland. Yeah. Wow. So this is your second time going to the motherland? Yeah. Okay. Where did you go for the first time? I went next door today. I went to Cape Verde. Cape Verde. Ah. They always say, no stress. That's wow. their saying. That's their slogan. Wow. Yeah. And you recently came back from Gambia. I did. I saw Auntie Fatima. Oh, big up Auntie Fatima. I'll see you soon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to stay with you years later. Yeah. No, you know what? <laughs> Tell me about how you met somebody like Auntie Fatima. Oh my God. Uh, if she could be watching this now, I'm going to find a way to show this to her. Um, basically, guys, first of all, I'm a lover of buying foreign jewelry and hats. Yeah. Um, you don't want to see my hat collection. I've got probably got. I don't know if I'm on nearly 200 now, I don't even know. Wow. But um, I have a massive jewelry collection. However, as soon as I tend to land in a country, I'm drawn to buying something from there. Mm. Now, um, the jewelry piece that I bought, you could actually buy that in London from other African stores, mm. but to have it a bit more specialized and tailor-made to my neck, um, Auntie Fatima, who owns this jewelry store, who's yeah. also a tailor, yeah. seamstress, um, made it for me. And so she just has, what I call great customer service and oh. a great spirit. Mm. Everyone can own a business, but not everyone has what it takes to present themselves in a certain way. So she earned the respect of being called Auntie Fatima. You know what? It was amazing. It really touched my heart when she said it took her, she stayed up overnight. Did you see how it was of her? You know what? Like As Auntie Fatima. Yo, oh. yo, yo, yo. She's so beautiful, She's guys. Beautiful. I, I think for me, the reason why I want us to be doing this series is people born in the diaspora people living in the diaspora 
take certain things for granted mm -hmm. when people hear africa when people hear the caribbean mm -hmm. all that possibly they may think of is that is where my parents my grandparents came from mm -hmm. in terms of you being a person how did you feel when you got to gambia <sighs> Well, it's been a long time coming. I have a very extensive travel list um, and it's not just Africa. However, as we're focused on Africa in this conversation, there are other places I want to go to. Of course, Ghana, you know, um, and I always thought I'd marry a Ghanaian man, but hey, anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> that's going to be another yeah, interview. That's a whole other interview. Go ahead, I'm yeah, listening. Oh, Ghana, I'm going I'm I'm to get there. But however, sometimes you just kind of um, embrace whichever, even though I've had this list of places I want to go, it's sometimes about the vibration of timing, you know, and where I'm called to go. Mm. And so I happened to go to Gambia before Ghana. Um, but how did I feel as an individual or just as a, Car as a Caribbean disabled person going there? So you've definitely landed it extra. So you being a Caribbean, uh -huh. going to, you know, Gambia, going mm -hmm. to Africa, mm -hmm. Let me put it as well. Mm -hmm. How did it make you feel? Well, oh, this came, I'm half, not just this came. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, oh. half, I'm half Jamaican and half Dominican and born in London, yes. Okay. How did I feel? I just felt, I felt privileged. I felt privileged to have the health, the strength and the finance in the moment to embark upon that journey with my sister travel buddy. And um, when I got there, I just couldn't wait to explore just couldn't wait to explore the grounds the the climate the the smell the, the the you know the food the people the culture the attire everything i i i i, I cried i don't oh. want to go home i don't want to go home oh. yeah so how do you think i felt i felt amazing just the naturalistic energy the spiritual um climb, everything because i'm a very spiritually inclined woman so it is a it's a vibration it's a real vibration out there somebody did put it out on instagram to say that they were born in london mm -hmm. parents came from the caribbean mm -hmm. she went to the caribbean for the first time and she didn't feel like she belonged oh. she's thinking of going to africa mm -hmm. but she's still also having the reservations mm -hmm. and i thought you know you are not going to be the only person as in that particular individual mm -hmm. may not be the only person stuck between those two places mm -hmm. i'm here in london unfortunately the system sometimes does not make me feel like this is my home yeah but yet i'm looking for the opportunity to go where i can call home mm. for those people out there who yeah they were born in london they were born in the diaspora mm -hmm. and looking for that connection mm -hmm. how let me use you mm -hmm. how does it make you feel as a person of caribbean descent born in london mm -hmm. but yet going to africa that is a great question for me <clears throat> and I'm a little bit, uh, I guess, a bit controversy. My my response is going to be mm. because we've had a very extensive history of people like myself and my parentage and and people from Caribbean and all sorts who are not African, you know, born in Africa or raised by direct African parents. Mm. We've always known that we've had something taken from us, and you know, our sense of where do we belong. So as a black sister. I think a lot of people are just going to say that Africa, I felt home. I don't know if you know what I'm saying to I you. Do. There's a difference in me saying, oh, apparently I belong in Africa. Mm. And apparently, oh, let me go Ghana. It's just what everyone does. Mm. But do you really feel it? Mm. Or is it because you've been listening to this song being played your whole life? Mm. So me as a free spirit, I've gone to many places. And I've always said I've never gone to anywhere twice. Mm. I've said it on my footage. I've never been to anywhere twice. Let me interrupt you. Go for but it. for Gambia, oh. you are thinking of going. Can I go there tonight? Yo! <laughs> and let, me go, let me go and do my overtime so I can go back there. Tell me about it. Why that double wanting to go back to Gambia? Do you know? Let me. It's so it's so interesting as well that I would say that because it's it's got very okay. Let me talk about the the, the cons. Mm. Then you'd understand the spirit that that contradicts that. The fact that Gambia. It's red sanded. It's 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 like built like red sanded, which means that it's very toxic in terms of the air, the air. People, some people wear masks because it's so dusty, mm. sand, dust, red dust everywhere. There's no put wearing fancy shoes because mm. <laughs> I mean, forget about pedicures. It doesn't mm. exist. No. It didn't exist. I didn't even see my toes because no. all the dust was covering it. I mean, literally mm. everywhere you go, in the back of cabs, restaurants, it's dust mm. because of the grounds, mm. yeah, and the, the 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 roads are really bad at mm. the moment. So the fact that it's not even built up that way and the fact that 
it's just not the kind of place based on that that I guess you'd want to just say I'm, I'm gonna live because mm. unless you're gonna wear flip-flops for the rest of your life mm. me I'd be happy to sit on the corner of the street and watch the world go by it's just a vibe it's a vibe and again it's a spiritual thing definitely a spirit thing um, I'm not the type that's gonna say oh because I'm in Africa I had this great awakening it's, um, people do say that but I think it's just because it's Africa mm. But are you again really feeling that or mm. is it because you've just been taught that you have that at the climax and you're here mm. so it can be a combination of things for me it's bizarre to say that i didn't get any peace physical peace mm -hmm. <clears throat> because people are constantly approaching you you know okay. i want can i have okay. can i you know how it is okay yeah okay. so i feel like i did a holiday to get over that holiday because okay. i didn't have any psychological peace mm. However, I had the most spiritual peace I've ever had. How were the people like? Oh my goodness, 99.99 gonna be smiling. It's a smiling coast, yeah? Wow. Smiling, welcoming. But I do think that one thing about people, everyone's kind of like that until you don't want to buy from them. Mm. So that's always a really good psychological trick. Mm. So I had more people that still said, no worry, it's okay, mm. have a nice day. But then you're going to have those who are going to be like, really? Because I didn't get, buy anything. Yeah. And I had to say to many, everywhere I go, I say, I can't, can't buy from everyone. Yeah. Everyone's still selling the same thing. Come yeah. on. Yeah. You know, but yeah. me, I can't wait to get back out there and just, just, just vibe. I'll be happy to pull up a chair and go sit beside Ali Fatima for the day. I saw you at the beach. Yeah. You know, connecting. Oh my you God. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I said, this is exactly where I want to be doing Christmas. Yeah. You know? But we've got a vibe where people are talking about Dirty December, Ghana and all that. And <laughs> Dirty December. What, yeah, tell me a bit about that. You know, oh. yeah, people definitely, you know, are going to Ghana. People are definitely thinking of, you know, let's go and have the rave, have everything going on in Ghana, which I think, okay, fair dues. And I think I'll be doing a video on yeah. where it could be a bit backfiring. We need to be careful how yeah. much we take everything, you know, right. because some systems are not ready to absorb the party life, you know, 24-7. Gambia's got that seven days a week, by the way. Seven days a week? Okay, yeah. Are you ready for this? Go ahead. I have so much to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> so much to tell wow. you. Let me just touch on that. It's the least important, but I'll touch on that. Mm. I stayed on the strip. Mm. My hotel's at the back, okay? So as soon as you come at the hotel, you walk less than five minutes. You have restaurants side to side, back to back. Mm. And you also have nightclubs from back to back. Mm. Um, it's amazing. It's super cheap out there. Your money will stretch by far. Okay. I mean, you know, we may have two hundred pounds and maybe a couple of notes like this. Mm -hmm. You there two hundred pounds? You feel like you're balling. You want to make it rain. <laughs> it's like artificial <laughs> balling life. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. You cannot change all your money. Disclaimer: If you want to bring a grand, don't change that oh. grand because you're not gonna know where to hide the money. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, two hundred pounds. My notes were up to here. Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay, the currency is different, mm. so your money will stretch. Mm. Um, but it were, yeah, I mean, my aim, as you know, we both do media. Mm. Um, again, I'm free flame thoughts. And um, I was talking to people on the streets, from police officers to everyday people. So I was just doing live footage and talking to everyone and asking everyone the one con one question, which is, what's the greatest thing about Gambia? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, maybe a couple of the sisters who carry the fruits and sold the fruits on their head, I'd ask them to show me how I to carry it. I saw you try it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm, such, I'm such a comedian, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah it was amazing but there are some bits that are disturbing mm. Mm. um let me know when you want to hear about that go ahead let's hear it and i think it's good for <laughs> us to be able to hear all the you know the glamour mm -hmm. but also all the other areas where you know we need to be very much aware yeah, of. yeah. yeah? so tell mm. us about it well let, yeah, let's get into the, the most important parts mm. for now um first of all a lot of us have heard about you know the Gambian visa and you know trip of relationships and 99.999 everyone out there is looking for you know, to come to UK with you okay that doesn't offend me because I think anywhere you are you're going to want a better life so that doesn't offend me that people's going to want to meet somebody mm. and finesse them and say hey you're the most beautiful woman that I've ever met in my life yeah. you know no problem however mm. I'm hearing that the government that's in Gambia has actually already put out 
disclaimer I've heard, haven't mm. seen it myself. Um, warnings to, you know, the Caucasian middle-aged woman that goes to Gambia purely to For keep that. dealing and exchanging with the Gambian man. Mm. And I think they're becoming a bit fed up of the slackness. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? So while these stories are usually told based on the interest of the person telling the story, the victim can easily become the abuser. What we then had to do is to be able to find stories or two different stories from different channels, which helps us to be able to identify exactly what we were talking about. In this instance, I think the most important thing is if there are two concerning adults, then we may not need to question. However, there is evidence that this is also applicable to children which definitely needs to be raised to question. I leave the husbands in the UK, come here and have fun with a black man. Yeah. And then go back to the husband in the UK, yeah. With its total population of 2.6 million people, Gambia enjoys relatively untouched beaches. On the flip side, these beaches birthed the infamous Gambia Bumsters, known for exploiting lonely grannies from Europe in the name of love and pleasure. In the end, it's a sad tale of lost money and dignity. The only thing he came for was a visa, passport, have a better life than he had there. It was his escape. But he's got what he wanted, and it wasn't me. Um, when I was on, whilst on the beach, um, it was brought to my attention. Someone said, look at that little, little black boy with this grown Caucasian man. It looks odd. When I turned around, it, I just didn't feel right. And mm. I said, God, forgive me if I'm, if I'm judging in the wrong way. It didn't look right. So I said to this other sister, I didn't know, I said, excuse me, you speak the language. Mm. What do you think? She said, I'm going to ask him where his mum is. Okay. So she called the little boy. The boy must have been about eight. And she said, where's your mum? And he looked reluctant to go to her. I was mm. watching the whole dialogue. Okay. He said, oh, she's at home. She goes, who's the man with you? Oh, it's my uncle. I don't think so. There's a reputation of, unfortunately, older men um, renting children's bodies for their pleasure. Wow. And unfortunately, the, a lot of the families want the money. Wow. And I was just, you know, and I remember a Gambian man who, who sells on the beach came and said to me, he said, listen, we've seen the Caucasian old middle-aged man come here and pay girls to go into the sea with him. And he slapped one of them before we arrived and said get this young girl out the water he took the man to the police station and unfortunately the man was able to buy, buy his, buy his way, way out so there's a lot there seems to be a lot of that going on my philosophy if two consenting adults want to do what they want to do i've got nothing exactly. to say yeah. survival is survival do what do your thing but when it comes to children i'm a little disturbed Today's report is about old white ladies, specifically from Europe, uh, going as tourists um, to Gambia and uh, basically scoring a night with different uh, young men that are uh, from Gambia. And um, they are being accused of exploiting those young men for their pleasure. And um, let me read you the article and we'll be back. A new documentary on the UK's Channel 4 network that was broadcast on Monday reveals how the West African nations of Gambia has become a hotspot for older European holidaymakers, usually women, looking to show romantic love to young men in exchange for money or gifts. An elderly white female tourist who spoke with British journalists on the Sex on the Beach documentary attested to how easy it was to hook up with the young men who are locally referred to as bumpsters. She said it's paradise. You could have a different man every night. Face to Face reported, Alka, a 32-year-old Gambian who is married to a Belgian woman twice his age, told Road some of the women come to the coastal nation in search for love while others come for flings, referring to the latter groups as holiday makers. Sometimes they're not good tourists, they're holiday makers, he said, someone who comes to f*** you and leave you. Alka added, it really, really hurts me, referring to the sex tourists and how wealth disparities put some of the cougars in positions where they can pray and take advantage of the young men. So, interestingly, I was watching what happens at Gambia beaches, ah. and it may not be a stereotypical thing, I don't know, it, it may not, not be, stereotypical. It's real. you know, and it's really interesting that you are yeah, saying yeah. this, um, hopefully I'll be in Gambia. Um, mm -hmm. sometime this year yeah. and hopefully if anybody wants you to speak to me about that I'm more than happy but 
I work as a social worker and my aim is to be able to, you know, protect children. Yeah. And unfortunately, okay. when it comes to poverty, yeah. some families may not understand the essence of, you know, protecting their children over the financial income that they're going to get. Yeah. We don't know, this video is not mainly to be able to discuss that, but equally it tells you the vulnerabilities and the level of exploitation it's very that hard can there. still go on mm -hmm. because, you know, people are still vulnerable. Yeah. As a black person mm -hmm. living in England where we know the system sometimes may not be... The system sometimes does not make us feel like we belong here. Yeah. Going back to a space where you are seeing people who look like you, want you to feel like home, and still seeing abuse, you know, mm -hmm. or where people are so naive mm -hmm. about the intentions of other people who come mm -hmm. to their land. How does it make you feel? Well, firstly, let me cover the first part you said about being a black woman and going back to that space and how does that make me feel. Firstly, you know, newsflash in many black countries in Africa, many continents, they don't, they, they see you, yes, you're black, but they don't ex always accept you as a black African. Let's get that straight. That's yeah, I'm sure you yeah, know that. I know that. Yeah. yeah. No problem. I still claim you and I love you anyway. And they just, you know, and I laugh. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I get it. And as you know, we are coming more to a united place as Africans and Caribbeans. It wasn't so long ago that many Africans wouldn't even call, you know, talk to us Jamos, Jamaicans. Mm. And I would say, I'm half Dominican. They don't want to acknowledge that, but as far as I've got Jamaican, it's like, I'm their creepy. Uh. <laughs> yeah? But at the same time, it's often maybe mainly Nigerians who behave that way. And actually, Jamaicans and Nigerians, you're not going to have your disclaimers, we have a lot in common. The Yo. Negatives, especially the negatives. We have a lot in common, the negatives and the positive. Even the whole energy, we're, they're very similar, Jamaicans and Nigerians. You know yeah? what? Anybody like, who is like. a Jamaican married to a Nigerian, I'm looking for that combination. I, you know, I like Nigerian <laughs> men. Yeah, I mean, they, they get on my nerves like don't like, like Jamaicans, but oh, I, I like Nigerian men. But you know, Ghani men are a bit more, a bit more humble now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, humble. it's really interesting yeah. in terms of the nuances, in terms of what people mm. have in common, and you can definitely see. That semblance between Jamaicans, Nigerians. And you can't tell either of them that because no. they'll get offended. But you know what I say? Often we don't like what we mirror. Don't tell mm. them I said that. Often we don't <laughs> like what we mirror. So, you know, there's so much in common. But get into the punch of your of your, your, your question. Mm. The exploitation, there was so much of it that the Gambians themselves, who let's say the professionals who were working in restaurants, it just it goes past them because you can see the teenage boy or the, early, the boy in his 20s holding a middle-aged white man's hand. It's odd. I know that you need your survival. You can see the young, you know, the young black sister holding a very old man's hand. This is not love. But I get it. I don't even, I don't at all judge it. It's no. survival. I don't at all, I mean, people do it in London, you just don't recognize it like no. that. But Gambia is notorious. In fact, you want a little bit of juice? Go ahead. I have an amazing acquaintance driver that I met in Gambia, amazing. He even sat with me when I went to the hospital because I, I don't know if you know, I, was, I had to have two trips because I was bitten so badly, next story. Amazing driver. And um, on that day I went to the beach and I was with a horse and he helped film me on that day. And I, when I came back to London, I tagged him in that post, right. innocently. It wasn't even a week Ooh, less than a week before I had a middle-aged Caucasian woman come on my page for his page and say hey are you messing with him well let's just say the answer I gave her you joking now you see I've always said to people whenever if you are seeing somebody mm. and you want to confront another woman especially women mm. use psychology please take note ladies okay Go to the person's inbox or phone and befriend them yeah. in the best psychological way. Because yeah. then you are going to get something out of it. Mm. Yeah. Usually women are quite bulldozers. Mm. And actually, if it, even if it's innocent, one's going to say, yes, I'm seeing him and what? what? When they know they're not. Yeah. Because you don't know how to approach people. Mm. Now, had she come to my inbox, I would have respected her. Because maybe that is your partner. Yeah. I mean, maybe you're renting him. Yeah. Investment plan, I get it. Yeah. And I would have said, oh, no. I just, he's my driver, driver. I've nothing to worry about. Girl, do you? Yeah. But I, because she came on my big public page, are you messing with this man? 
I just had to say to her, honey, this is not a YouTube channel, Rent a Gambian. That's what I actually put. This is not I actually put this on my page. This is not a YouTube channel called Rent a Gambian. And um, I won't be giving out visas, but I know who you are. Wow. I don't you know why I told her that? You know why I told I do, her that? I do, that's you really. are it's so this is not a rumor, people. The it's true. The reputation of Gambians with these white women is true. I don't care how people take how I say it, it's true. Guys, I think I'm already getting how I'm gonna title this interview. Yeah. Because I think this is the reality that we don't get people to talk about. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> we only hear the fact that I went there, you know, the beaches was nice, you know, yeah. you could speak to people. And that's true, <laughs> you know, but the reality is where are the areas of worry what are we seeing that people are actually you know this is real it's not a rumor it's not a stereotype wow. well i told her she came back well he wouldn't be saying that if i was there you got a big mouth i would just like hashtag rent the gambia and go away and i actually inboxed him the screenshot of it well he was mad i said to him don't be mad, don't be mad. no no do you know what i said yeah. and i'm I've, listen i've got a lot of respect for this man when i go yeah. to gambia i still say hey my driver come yeah, yeah i met him there you know me my sister whatever mm. but i said you know i said to him don't apologize it's not a reputation this is exactly what you guys do mm. we just didn't anticipate me to deliver it the way it came no and he's never had this problem before no because you don't know how to tell these women if they're gonna hire you in this way tell them keep them quiet mm. But he was, he, days after days after days, he was coming back on my page and apologizing. Apologizing. And I'm like, don't apologize for what you all do. Mm. But he felt bad because I, I told him about it. So I said, I did say you guys are a disgrace. Silva, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Okay. You, okay. you know, <laughs> I, I think people let us know some of the things that you may want Silva to be able to come back on the channel to be able yeah. to explain mm -hmm. because it's good to keep it straight and natural yeah. and that's exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If somebody's ever thinking, you know, this lady is on fire, yeah? <laughs> I think I want people to get more of that <laughs> and I know you do that on your channel, yeah? yeah? Tell us about your channel as well so that people can actually follow, be part of it and actually celebrate people like you. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm just a mere humble girl. <laughs> well, a little, a little channel with a few followers. Fire! Yeah, <laughs> I really am. I'm just, listen, I'm a baby in this game, um, but I love media for what I love to do. I love connect. My the reason why I do media firstly is because I love to soul connect. That's just what I'm about. That's, That's what great. my platform's about. Soul connectivity. Um, I don't do exploitation like that on my on my channels. Um, um, free flowing thoughts on IG is a page where I do my lives on Wednesdays and Fridays and any topic goes as long as it flows mm. and I mean my page is not for the faint hearted or the prudish please don't come on my page if you're going to be a typical auntie or uncle don't come don't come mm. yeah <laughs> yeah so I'm very liberal yeah. um yeah so um that's where people can find me at free flowing thoughts underscore and I'm on the TikToks and the Facebooks um, TikTok I'm on there as Chit Chat with Silver okay. Facebook I'm Silver Tea Learning yeah um, yeah, and they can get through to you to get through to me. People, please, <laughs> if you want to get hold of, you know, Silver, please, <laughs> you know, let me know in the comment section. I think I will be able to find different ways of getting hold of her so that, yeah. you know, if you've got a channel that focuses on all these things about us as a people, about her external experiences as well, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we will be able to, let's juice it out. Yeah, I'm all let's, for it. Yeah, it, I'm let, all for let's it. juice it out because we need these brains. <laughs> we need people who are keeping it straight, mm -hmm. keeping it as it is. Mm -hmm. You know, as compared to that boozy one where people yeah, think no. that's what we want to hear. No. Finally, yeah. let, let let's maybe wrap up and say you know, mm -hmm. for me it's an honor. Oh, you know, it, 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 it's an honor because I just reached out to Silva and I said, Yo, Silva, I'm really, let me use the word, envious of where you are. You are in Gambia. I'm not, I'm yeah. in the cold. <laughs> but when you come back, can we meet up? Mm. Boom. No, no, I'm ready. I'm good to go. No long thing. I said, Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, thank you very much for mm. that. But as I was following your journey, what I could see was you being able to relate to people. Mm. What makes you a people person? Soul connectivity, my brother. And I always tell people, please don't look at any form of external. I will strip that fear 
and on the other side I am just someone who is deeply into soul connectivity. When I come out of my position and I'm acting in any other way, you must have had to done something to me. Yeah, you know, but I'm all about soul connectivity. I'm a people's person. It excites me to see new places and smell new atmospheres and to talk to new people, especially when I'm doing live footage on the go when traveling. I do a lot more of it, so especially you, in Africa. You are amazing. So are you speaking to policemen? You know, I'm so you are the beaches. Yeah. <laughs> so are you speaking to Auntie Fatima? I won't find you. I love you, you Auntie Fatima. <laughs> Enough respect to you and enough yeah. respect to all the people who gave you the opportunity to speak to them. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I saw Auntie Fatima's necklace she made for you. It's kind of weird today, but I thought I walked last night on my live talks. So I thought I can't wear it again today, but I should have wore it. <laughs> Guys, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. I say thank you very much. Mm -hmm. If you haven't joined us on this channel, guys, we talk about black experience, we mm -hmm. talk about black excellences, and these are the kind of places or things that we want to talk about where people will keep it straight and natural. And we say thank you very much. Click on the subscribe button if you haven't. Follow us. And maybe you never know which country we're gonna go next. Namaste. Thank you very thank much. You. And it's an honor having you on the channel. Ditto. People, <laughs> show us some love. Boom. That's great. Oh! <laughs> I think you just have pictures now. Yeah, amazing. let's do pictures. That was so Ura. good, Nana.